just an incredible opportunity to be here with Conan O'Brien, one of the great comics living, and also a, a really close student of, of Lincoln. Um, As celebrities go. I'd like to be... <laughs> I'd like to be graded here on a curve, which is... I know a little bit more than Terry Hatcher. <laughs> and not as much as Paula Abdul, so just <laughs> go easy on me. Uh, well, tell us how you got interested in Lincoln. I, I was, uh, honestly, I came to this theater uh, when I was five. My, my dad took us on a trip. He piled the six O'Brien kids into a station wagon and took us to Washington. Uh, I was obsessed with Lincoln at an early age and uh, wrote plays about Lincoln when I was a kid to such a degree that people thought it was odd. And then, uh, <laughs> Uh, but I worked, it all worked out fine. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, all through, uh, read voraciously about Lincoln uh, through uh, high school. In college, when I got interested in humor, I immediately started uh, publishing uh, what I called Lincoln Comics, which were just silly comics that starred Abraham Lincoln, which were very abstract. I think in one, Lincoln was sitting in a race car with goggles at the finish line, being, uh, in a, uh, being handed uh, a bouquet. And a little kid with a wrench is saying, gee, Mr. Lincoln, you won the race. And Abraham Lincoln says, true, Corky, but not the race to unify our warring states. And so it's both the substance of his life and also Lincoln as a, as a you know, an icon for comedy that, that draws you to him. Yeah, I, I uh, well, you know, it's interesting, I, you know, as you said, it's so hard to take someone who has been gone for so long and there are no recordings of him and we just have, you know, we have some writings and we have some eyewitness descriptions, but it's so hard to, it's so hard to describe the next day why someone was funny at a party the night before. Yeah. Here we are, uh, whatever it is, 130 some odd years later, 40 some odd years later, and we're trying to figure out who this person was, but there are little moments, there are glimpses uh, where I think he actually breaks through even the 19th century, and you just see him as a funny person. And the first time it struck me was actually, I was reading Lincoln talking about General Rosencrantz, who had uh, not acted well at the Battle of uh, Chickamauga, and this is uh, in 1863, and Lincoln was not happy. He thought Rosencrantz had, had, had sort of lost his nerve, and he said Rosencrantz was confused and stunned like a duck hit on the head. And I read that, and I thought, that's such a funny image, you know. <laughs> it's sort of left out at the page, and a lot, there's a lot about 19th century writing that you, you read it and you think, well, maybe that was funny back then. Yeah. You know, maybe my great-great-grandfather would have loved that. That actually broke through, because I would say that about half the people I work with now, is, <laughs> what are you, you're like a duck hit on the head, get out of here. And it, it was yeah. Lincoln speaking to me as a funny person. Yeah. So, uh, that really resonated. Yeah. There's uh, moments uh, where Lincoln is sarcastic, and you think of sarcasm as a late 20th century invention, you know. Oh, great idea. Oh, yeah, why don't you just go do that? I mean, that is an attitude that a lot of young people have today about just about everything. Uh, <laughs> and God bless them. Um, <laughs> there aren't many of them here tonight. Uh, but. But, uh, it, but there are moments where you see in Lincoln's writing that he has, um, at one point, uh, he gets a telegram from Grant, and, uh, and Grant pretty much says uh, that, I think General Sheridan, if he pushes a little more, we could win this, we could win the war. And Lincoln wrote back, and this is an actual quote, General Sheridan says, if the thing is pressed, I think that we will surrender. Let the thing be pressed. And I read it, and it feels very much to me like Lincoln saying, yeah, go do that thing that will win the Civil War. <laughs> you know, which is basically what he's saying. Well, there's one thing we could do, and then the whole thing's over after four years of bloodshed. Why don't you go do that then? <laughs> which is great. It just, yeah. It's like reaching out and grabbing you, and I think it's something that you'd see in a sitcom today. Yeah.